a, a huge track record with your uh, trends uh, journal. And uh, one of the big trends you, you picked uh, early last year in 16, when everybody was saying, oh, he doesn't have a chance. You were saying Donald Trump is going to, well, he's going to win. We think he's going to win. And you, and you doubled down on that prediction. Of course, he did win. But that doesn't mean he's without uh, problems. And uh, the very first uh, person to fall uh, is uh, General Flynn, who uh, got wrapped up in a little bit of lying and talking to the Russians. And they say he could be a, uh, a security issue, a threat uh, for, uh, I don't know, with blackmail by the Russians. But uh, other people say this is just the, uh, the oligarchs in the press and the Democrats just trying to whittle away Trump's power and his lieutenants. What say you? Well, you, you left one out, and that's the neocons, the people that love war, those psychopaths and sociopaths. Let's not forget them, you know, the Wolfowitzes and the, and the penis, excuse me, Dick Cheney's, they have to be proper. Uh, you know, let's not forget that crew, the Condoleezza Rice's, the Hillary Clinton's, all these people that gave us wars like Obama. And what did Trump do? When Trump came in, one of the first things he wanted to do and during his campaign was, let's stop this fighting with Russia. They're not the threat that everyone says they are. And since he's been saying that, he's been attacked. So let's go back to Flynn. And, and Trump said it as well, that the CIA has become too politicized, that a lot of these agencies are wasting money and giving us bad information. That was a lot of what, would, what Flynn was about. And let's not forget that Obama dumped Flynn because those are the things that Flynn was saying that Obama didn't want to hear. I have to tell you, Greg, these little liberals really disgust me. And you mentioned that we forecasted Trump in the Trends Journal was going to win the election as early as May of 2016. Pretty early. And I'm not, we don't take a stand on who we like, who we dislike. We're forecasters. We call things the way they are. We're going to tie this all in and bring it back to Flynn. So here we have Obama, who started a war in Libya, destroyed the place, the richest country in Africa, for something they never did to us. We saw Hillary Clinton, and I'm going back to the liberals and going back to Flynn, the hypocrisy in what's going on, who, as you know, when she was asked on the news how she felt about hearing that Muammar Gaddafi was killed, not just killed, sodomized with knives, she straightens herself up, and anybody could Google it up, you could see it. We came, we saw, he died. He. I'm going back to what you said about the people that are trying to bring Trump down. That's the crew. The murderous little people like the Clintons and the Obamas, quote, I'm really good at killing people in the book Double Down, how he signs off on slaughtering people with drones, of which over 4,000 during his administration of innocent civilians were killed. And there's much more because they don't bring war zone areas into where he did drone strikes. So going back to the people that want Trump out, let's tie it all together and go back to Russia. Throughout the campaign, Donald Trump was talking about peace with Putin. Immediately after the campaign ended and Trump won the election, what did we hear? We heard three things. Number one, the Russians are coming. The Russians are coming. Week after week after week after week from the prostitute media, how they hacked into the DNC and how they did this and how they were in bed with Putin, uh, with, with Trump's campaign and on and on. We heard it for every week up until Election Day. The other story we heard was at ah, this electoral college. I told you it's no good. We got to get rid of that. And you saw all these little Hollywood Nothings. These little Katzenbergs and Spielbergs and De Niro's and Clooney's, all these little crybabies crying that Trump won and fighting against him during the election campaign. The third thing we heard, and of course they did those little two-bit commercials about how the Electoral College has to change their mind and really vote for Hillary Clinton, 
who, by the way, and again, tying it all together with these mass marches of all of these women, if only the women were in charge, there'd be peace and beauty. Oh, yeah, you forgot about slaughtering Hitlery and just what I said. Oh, that kind of murder was okay with you, all of you women that protested but didn't show up when we launched Occupy Peace dot us over here and how ralph nader cindy sheehan dr robert thurman and gary Null. oh no you don't like that kind of piece you just like pieces of crap that you love to support and won't call murderers so let's go back to the other issue that we kept hearing after the campaign it's all very important because tracking trends is the understanding of where we are how we got here and where we're going so what was the third issue? Well, the first, of course, the Russians are coming. The Russians are coming. The second one was the Electoral College. And you remember, Greg, or maybe you forgot. We need a vote recount in Pennsylvania and Michigan and Wisconsin. That's all we heard. The media has been attacking Trump from day one. They're bringing in the Flynn thing because he was an anti-neocon. That's the reason. The neocons want war. They want destruction. They want the military industrial complex to continue to build. That's why Flynn is out. And Trump's campaign, I don't know why he's still campaigning. He should keep the people off the air. They shouldn't go on the prostitute networks. What the hell do I care what a little creature like Scarborough or Matthews has to say or think? They've been wrong about everything. The facts are there. And the biggest hypocrites are all of these people that are campaigning to bring Trump down as they supported their murderer-in-chief. The con manda, Barack Obama, the Nobel Peace of Crap Prize winner, who immediately after he got into office, brought more troops into Afghanistan, 33,000 of them, to get our soldiers killed and slaughter more people. Barack the con man Obama, the drone strikes, put more whistleblowers in prison and jail and all the other presidents combined. Barack Obama that brought us the Libyan war and Assad has to go, slaughtered over 500,000 innocent Syrian people, destroyed the country, and this is what the women, who if only a women's were in charge, we'd have peace and love. I'm tired of people playing the gender card. I'm tired of the race card. I'm tired of it all. Crap and greatness comes in all races, creeds, and colors. So save it for yourself. I don't want to hear it anymore from all of these little cowards that won't call a spade a spade. Do you think uh, the trend of uh, attacking Trump is entrenched, and will it continue? And, and the second part of the question is, what does Trump need to do to fight back? It will continue as long as Trump keeps playing their game. <clears throat> Why the hell is he putting his people on the Cartoon News Network, better known as CNN? Why the hell is he going on any of these shows and talking to these people? Avoid them. Stay away from them. You got business to do. So as long as he keeps playing the presidential reality show and steps out of his role as a reality show champion and plays more of the role as president and bringing different levels of dignity and respect to the office rather than going into the swamp called the network media mainstream, it's going to keep being a battle. Is it their goal to, I mean, uh, basically WikiLeaks came out and said they were, they're talking about a destabilization campaign. WikiLeaks, which, you know, they were the ones that exposed all this uh, uh, coordination, but, you know, collusion between the press and the Clinton 
uh, the Clinton campaign and all the other stuff they've broken uh, with all these emails, which now are confirmed to be true, uh, even by the Democrats. But they're calling it uh, a, a Flynn, just part of this destabilization campaign. Uh, do you think, do you see a destabilization campaign and do you think it will continue? Do you, do you see it being successful? Again, it, we, as I mentioned, it was a destabilization campaign from the day after Election Day. <clears throat> Read the headline of USA Today the day after the election. New president to go into office with something like 72 lawsuits. Rather than we have a new president. It was a continual attack. Again, the Russians are coming. The Russians are coming day after day. The, as I'm saying, the electoral college and a vote recount. There is a definite movement to take Trump out. There's no question about it. Again, to answer whether or not Hillary will defeat them, he will not defeat them playing their game. He won the election because he played his own game. Let's go back. Ooh, oh, by the way. That's good. That's very, that's very good. Very important point. He won the election by playing his own game. Most people thought he's very unconventional. You're right. That's a very good point. Very good. Very good point. Go ahead. I, I digress. Go ahead. No, no, no. You, because that's the point I want to make. The New Trends Journal is coming out. Okay. One of our major stories is called Play the Trump Card. What we're saying is <clears throat> it's not whether you like him, dislike him. He won. Start looking at why he won. Again, unconventional. Greg, go back to less than a month before the election. Listen to what Paul Ryan, the Speaker of the House, or before that, I think he played Eddie Munster, <laughs> because he's a little nothing of a nobody. Yeah, uh, I, I, he's uh, got the weasel factor for me, too. Yeah. yeah. And then look at the whole Republican Party. McConnell, Lindsey Graham, John McCain. There's nothing there. Go back a month before the election. Read the headlines. Ryan won't support Trump. GOP fears losing House and Senate. Trump didn't need them. He doesn't need them now. Trump beat as I said, he beat Hollywood. He beat the Katzenbergs, the Spielbergs, the Cloonies, the De Niro's. He beat Silicon Valley. The WikiLeaks, as you mentioned, they showed that Eric Schmidt, and I think it's spelled wrong, but I got to be clean on, t on, you know, on your show over here. But the head of Google, in bed with the Clinton campaign, the Zuckerbergs, the top talent the top money people of Silicon Valley, they lost. Trump beat them. Trump, as I said, he beat the mainstream media. They all got it wrong. We're the only magazine in the world that called this a winner, and they all ignored us, and they all know who we are. They didn't want to hear the truth because they have the agenda. Trump beat them. What I'm saying is Trump can beat and win. He beat all of them. He beat Obama. They didn't, it wasn't the Russians, folks, that made the election go his way because the Republicans cleaned up state houses around the country. They defeated Obama in the House and the Senate, the House big time. Play the Trump card. There are no rules. That is the lesson. You play it the way you see it, believe it, and play it to win. So Trump could win if, but right now he's playing their game. He has to play the Trump card. Uh, he is uh, inheriting a, a dreadful, god-awful debt, uh, $20 trillion. Uh, the Federal Reserve is absolutely psychopathic. We had Stanley Fisher, the vice chair, over the weekend, I think on Sunday, give some kind of a message. Gregory Manorino called me up and said, dude, man, do you, uh, he's giving this encrypted message. They're not going to raise rates. Stocks are going to go sky high. They're going to go up. Uh, sure enough, they did. He was right. Then we have <laughs> Chair Yellen uh, in front of Congress saying, "Oh uh, no, I th we may not. We, we we putting off raising rates is not the right thing to do." Basically, is what she's saying. I mean, they're absolutely schizophrenic. Uh, meanwhile, you've written a big piece about gold, uh, and we can't get around the debt. 
Uh, what's going on with the Fed, interest rates, and gold? And you're very good at economic forecasts as well. So I want to get your take on what, 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 are you, what is your take on interest rates, the Fed, and gold? We believe they're going to raise interest rates. And with the markets going up the way they are, and again, you know, the markets are going to go down. There's no question about it. You know, this whole market uh, rally uh, on Trump. And again, let's put the facts into place. From election day to New Year's Day, the stock market went up the highest since 1952 when Dwight D. Eisenhower was elected. Small business confidence in December was the highest since 1980. That's when Ronald Reagan got elected. What was going on before that? We had the Iran hostage crisis and stagflation and the nation in turmoil. The reason the markets are going up and going back to the dollar is because of high expectations with Trump to cut taxes. And again, whether or not you agree or disagree with this, we're trend forecasts, as we tell people. This is what's going on. We're not making arguments for or against. We're saying what is. Cutting taxes, repatriating money that taxes that haven't been paid overseas with the deals he's making. And the other one is infrastructure repairs. So deregulation, infrastructure spending, and, and cutting back taxes. That's what's driving the markets. Is there going to be a pullback? Yes, probably a large one. But considering the markets are up almost 10%, if you have a 5% pullback, so what? Yes, they're going to raise interest rates because there's growth going on. And it's time to raise them because they've only raised them twice in over 10 years and only a lousy 50 basis points. And now you're starting to see inflation starting to move up again around the world. So yes, we believe there's going to be an interest rate rise. The stronger the dollar gets, the lower gold prices go in the United States. It's a fact. But then we look at the global scene. What's going on over there in China? They have a crisis going on. No, China's not devaluating their currency as, as Trump says they are. They spent almost a trillion dollars trying to prop up the yuan. They're doing everything they can to stop capital outflows. They just killed $75 billion worth of foreign deals trying to keep money here. It's not working. So the yuan's going down. The stronger the dollar gets, the weaker the emerging market currencies go. Look what's going on in Mexico. You're looking at the peso hitting new lows. So it goes back to gold. You have to look outside the United States for the strength of gold. You have global destabilization going on. And now look, like, and again, you have to put the whole picture together. And again, it ties back into the United States. Trump didn't win the election. It was the messenger, not the message. Excuse me, it was the message, not the messenger. If we had a different messenger, we wrote this in the Trends Journal, Trump is the wildest of wild cards. The message is the people are fed up with the 1% owning everything. They're fed up with globalization. They're fed up with multinationalization. They're fed up with a neo-feudal society where we go to jail and get fined for every little crime that we commit, but the Wall Street gang and the rest of the political nobility and the economic elite get a free ride. Let's go back to gold. Let's go overseas. Look what's going on in France with Le Pen's party. That she's got, they, they're saying that she's losing, but she's winning. Exactly. She same just same thing. Then go over to Italy with the five-star movement. They just knocked out little Renzi or Fonzi, I think it was, the prime minister. And they have a woman that they put in as mayor of Rome. Another one, another woman in Torino. Look what's going on in Germany with the AFD party, alternative for Deutschland. Take a trip to the Netherlands with Gert Wilder's party. Look what just happened over the last uh, several days over in Spain with the Podemos party having that big uproar. And now they put people back into power that know they don't want to do business with the establishment they want a new way. It's the message, not the messengers. 
And that's what people are missing. Go back to gold. They're going to be pulling out of the EU at some point. They're going to be knocking out the euro, the euro. Go back. Look what's going on in Greece as we're speaking. The debt crisis continues to build. The people are in an uproar about getting their pensions robbed from them. More taxes on them to pay, give the money to the banks that did the dirty deals. So going back to gold, look beyond the United States and look at it. And we're not, we don't give financial advice. We're forecasters. It is the ultimate safe haven asset in a time of economic turmoil and geopolitical instability. Do you think that the uh, part of the uh, problem with, I mean, the bond market, we're in epic debt. I mean, that's what I've heard from a multiple uh, financial uh, top financial people. The debt is epic. We're talking global, U.S., wherever you'd like to you take a look at it. It's epic. Well, if the debt is epic and it's uh, and it's no and the European Union goes under and the debt can't be paid, well, that means these bonds are no good. And, you got a, it. and if the bonds are no good, well, we have two hundred and thirty-three trillion in de- global debt now. We added another sixty trillion since the two thousand eight, eighty, sixty, seventy trillion since the two thousand eight uh, crisis, and we're at two hundred and thirty some odd, I think, a trillion in global debt. Uh, and if the bonds are no good, what happens if the bonds are no good? Oh, you got it. And let's go back again to Le Pen. Let's go back to. Uh, um, the Five Star Movement in Italy. Let's go to Germany, the Netherlands. Go to the countries that have the euro. Of course, with Brexit, they didn't have the euro, they had the pound. What's Marine Le Pen talking about, and what are they talking about in Italy? To bring back the the Swiss franc in, in France and the lira in Italy. And what does that mean? Paying back the debt in their currencies, which brings the debt way down in terms that you're paying it with a different currency, devalued, and you're getting the bondholders, you're getting the shaft. Let's go back to the U.S. debt and why the dollar is doing better than anybody else. As you mentioned, we have $20 trillion in debt. But people, again, all those little liberal frauds all those little big mouths who had lockjaw when their con mander in chief was in there, Obama, they weren't talking about him doubling the debt from ten trillion to twenty billion in his eight years. Trillion. Twenty trillion. I'm sorry, trillion. I keep yeah. doing that. That's okay. You're, we thank understand. You we understand you. I'm not correcting yeah. you to be mean to you. I'm correcting you. Just oh no, sure. thank you, thank okay, you. Okay. Yeah, I'm saying I always do that. I always get these numbers. I was never good with numbers. You know? Oh, I do this. Right. I do the same thing. I say billion when I mean trillion, but I, I digress. He doubled the debt from 10 to 20 trillion. Yes, go on. Yes. So where were the liberals crying about that? So now let's go back to it. Let's go back to the Fed. All they'll do is print more money. And that's why I'm saying why it's important to see what's going on in China, in Japan, in South Korea, in all of the countries, India. Look what's going on in India when they pulled in 86% of the cash, trying to turn it into a cashless society. So the problems exist, but when you look at the global debt and the global problems, the United States is still doing better than most of them. That's why the dollar still maintains its strength. It's not because it's so strong, it's because the other ones are so weak and all the other pressures they have on top of them. And when it comes back to gold, you think, is there going to be a rush? I mean, I think the money people, if you talk to, I, I, I don't know, Egon von Greerts, uh, you know, who vaults gold for people in the Swiss Alps and other places. If you talk to people like that and his friends, uh, they all know where this is going, that rich people. They know it's going to be, gold's going to be the only asset standing in silver, I guess, and land, artwork, diamonds, whatever. Uh, but, it, but tangible stuff is going to be stuff. Is that, is that what you're saying? The reason why you like gold is because the bonds are going to go poof, and then you're going to be left with what? Exactly. Well, again, if you if you lived in Mexico, what would you rather hold your devalued pesos or gold? If you're over there in Turkey and your lira is at all time lows, what would you rather be holding? So it's more than just bonds. It's everything. Why do you think? Oh, 
Now, not why do you think? One of the reasons why Bitcoin prices have gone up so high, you know who's brought them up? 94% of it? The Chinese. The Chinese people are buying Bitcoin and gold because of the devaluation of the yuan. The government is trying to do everything they can to stop it. They just knocked the price down a couple of hundred bucks a few days ago over there in China by putting more regulations on the Bitcoin sellers. And that's why we're more positive with gold, because countries, governments could do anything they want to, de to, to, to bring down Bitcoin prices at any time. And, they, and by the way, they're going to do the same thing with gold. When gold prices start skyrocketing, watch for all of that paper gold, all those naked shorts in the commodity markets to drive down the prices. But it's only going to be temporary because there are two different markets. We only have one in Bitcoin. You only have the digital world of Bitcoin. In gold, you have the paper market and you have the physical market. That's the big difference. The physical market's not going to go away with gold, no matter what they do to try to drive down the paper market price of it. Ah, excellent point. Excellent. People are going to love this. And so you're, and with prices to where they are now, uh, you know, some people think, well, the, you know, they're up from $300 an ounce to $1,200 an ounce. And other people say, well, they're down from $1,900 an ounce to $1,200 and something dollars an ounce in silver, too. Do you like both metals? Uh, would you buy them now before there's some uh, – is there going to be some kind of a rush is there going to be some kind of a, a panic uh, buy into gold, uh, physical gold? Uh, tell us more. Our forecast for gold. The downside risk as we see gold, let's just give it a price at 1240 right now, just around there, is another 100 to $150 is the downside. Because it costs more than that to pull it out of the ground after it hits that level. So it's not going to go much lower than that. That's our forecast. Again, not advice to buy or sell. That's, our, that's no downside risk. The upside, here's our forecast. Gold has to break above $1,400 an ounce and solidify over it. So we're talking 1440, 1460, 1480, 1450, 1470, in that range. Once it solidifies in that range, we're saying it's going to spike to over 2,000 an ounce. That's our forecast. We're on record of saying that. We've been saying it now for the better part of a year and a half. That's our forecast. We are near the downside risk of gold. $150 down to us is no downside because we look at gold, again, as having it for your golden age. It's not something that we trade. It's something we buy and hold. You have it there as the safe haven asset. Because when all goes down, there is no safe haven, more safe haven asset as we see it in commodities or currency than gold. It's been around since the written word. It's not going anywhere other than higher as we see it. And uh, people are probably sitting here right now saying, Grant, ask him about silver. A ask him about silver. Okay, what about silver? We see silver prices following gold. And that's where we see it. We're more bullish on gold because you need less of it to carry with you. You know, there's, I always talk about GC's, Gerald Salenti's three G's. Guns, gold, and a getaway plan. And I don't say that as just a cheap line to throw out. I've written about it in the Trends Journal. When 9-11 happened, Greg, I was never forget the day. And I was watching CNBC in the morning. And the guy, I forget his name, he's passed on. He said, well, we got to break away. And I used to be on CNBC a lot in those days. And they were over in Edgewater, New Jersey. We got to break away. There seems there'd be a problem down at the World Trade Center. This is what they said. A private plane has struck the World Trade Center. Let's not get excited about this. We'll be back in them shortly. I used to do a lot of hot air ballooning in those days, and I had private planes flying around for many years. You don't crash into the World Trade Center on a beautiful, sunny September day by accident. So that was the first thing that went into my mind. Whatever happened was not an accident. 
The second thing was when I saw it and I'm watching it and again, not getting into the fact whether it was real or whatever, forgetting that, just what was that day and looking at it, Golden, going back to guns, gold and a getaway plan and silver. Watching that plane come in, the first thing I did after that is I was going out with a lovely French woman, Marie-Pierre Astier, who lived close to me up in New York. I lived in Rhinebeck, and I called her up. I said, Marie-Pierre, a plane just hit the World Trade Center. Go to the bank and get all your money out. This is my first reaction. Second thing I did is I called Fleet Bank. They no longer exist. They got bought out by Wells Fargo, Citibank, Bank of America, one of them. I had all our money, the Trends Research Institute. In those days, Greg, they had a thing called interest rates, and people used to buy CDs because they gave you a good interest rate. I called the guy up. I said to him, why are you transferring my money to the Rhinebeck Bank? I start giving him the information. He cuts me off. Mr. Salenti, your money's in certificates of deposit. Certificates of deposit are financial instruments traded on Wall Street, and Wall Street's closed. I said, you've got to be kidding. Third thing I did, because now I'm thinking, a plane just hit the World Trade Center. They say they're coming down the Hudson River. I'm a New Yorker. I remember when they built Indian Point Nuclear Power Plant. I was a kid watching it get built. The planes are coming down the Hudson River. Are they going to hit this nuclear power plant? Because if they do, there'll be chaos You'll see humans behave in an inhuman way you've never seen before. Guns, gold, and a getaway plan. I'm looking to get out of here if they hit that. I'm four and a half hours south of the Canadian border. I feel I'll go to Canada. From Canada, I could go anywhere. But if there's chaos here, you're not going to be able to go anywhere. Guns, gold, and a getaway plan. Why not silver? I got to carry too much of it. The next thing I did was I went to the bank in Rhinebeck. I had my money in those days. I have it in a different place now. I had it in a safety deposit box, which I'll never do again because, you remember, they could do anything they want. Close the banks, they just closed Wall Street. Will they close the banks? Holiday. We're on a holiday. A holiday? They're going to steal your money. You got it, man? So I go to the bank, get my money out of the gold, the gold out. I go... To, and buy these jerry jugs at the hardware store, fill them with gasoline, load up my business days before apps, had a bunch of maps, charted out the way how to take back roads to Canada because I know they're going to close down the major arteries, and I had my guns. Guns, gold, and a getaway plan. That's why I'm bullish on gold. What we're seeing going on in the United States, Greg, you were in major media. You've been around a long time, and so have I. We have never seen a divisiveness going on and hatred being built by people like we're seeing now. We've never seen a situation, okay, we have a new president, like him or not, he's our president, let's see what he's going to do, and let's go from there. No. Let's hate him. Let's fight against him. Let's do anything we can, and you're seeing it going on to disrupt this presidency. Again, now let's go global. Let's see what's going on in France and in Italy and in the Netherlands and Germany and Spain. What's going on in Mexico and Venezuela? Let's look at the world. Let's go to Argentina. Going back to guns, gold, and a getaway plan. I always say, as a close combat practitioner... Prepare for the worst. If the worst doesn't happen and you're prepared, you've lost nothing. If the worst happens and you haven't prepared, you could lose everything. All right, Gerald Salente, uh, uh, you're liking gold. Uh, silver's heavy, uh, but you still think it'll go up. And uh, love your take on Flynn and their attacks and all that. I, 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 all I can say is I'm, I'm praying for Donald Trump. I, that's not a joke, my friend. I am praying for Donald Trump. I'm praying for the country. But Gerald Salente, thank you. Gerald Salente, the, the publisher of the Trends Journal. Uh, I'll put all the links on uh, you know, after the interview section and before so you can get to that. Gerald Salente, thank you so much for joining us today on USAWatchdog.com. Thank you so much for having me on USAWatchdog.com. And again, thank you for all that you do. 
And I, too, am praying for the presidency. Because just like you, I'm not praying for the man. I'm praying for the country. It's our country, and it's up to us to make it the country that we want it to be. And that's one of peace, morality, and dignity. Enough of this. Because if we keep fighting with ourselves, we're going to destroy this nation. And we have all that we need here to bring back the growth and prosperity. And again, one of the reasons why the markets are also going up